So this tutorial is on how you can interpret your regression output in eViews. That is, what are the basic features of a regression output generated from the eViews application? I've launched my eViews. If you're a first-time eViews user and you still don't know how you can load your data into eViews, make sure you watch my video on that. It's very simple. Just follow through the example I made and you'll be fine. From the eViews interface, you can see that I've already created a group data for my variables. I have PCE and income. So let me double click on that. PCE here is a dependent variable and income is an independent variable. My observations run from 1960 to 2009. So I have 50 observations in total. That's 2009. So for us to be able to interpret our regression output, we first have to run our analysis. So for us to do that, come up here and click on quick. Maneuver down to estimate equation and you have this dialog box opening up for you. The first thing you have to type is the dependent variable PCE. The next thing you type is C, which is a constant followed by the independent variable. So if you have more than one independent variable, you list all your independent variables. Here you can see that the method of estimation is just ordinary uh, least squares, LS. And my sample size, like I said before, is from 1960 to 2009. So I click OK. And here is my output as generated by eViews. Let me move it up here for you to see it clearly. This output has a lot of information. What do they mean? How do we interpret them? So many figures. Sometimes you may get confused in it, but this is the essence of this tutorial. When you have your eViews output, how will you be able to interpret it? First, let's come up here. The dependent variable has been indicated to be PCE, like I explained to you before. The method is simply your method of estimation. In this case, we are using least squares. Yours could be var, yours could be ARDL or whatever. So the method you see here is simply the estimation technique. The date here connotes the date and time on which the analysis was carried out. The sample here indicates your sample size and your included observation is simply the number of observations in your sample. Next, I move to the output itself. The variable here just simply means C, which is a constant or the intercept of the regression line, and income is an independent uh, variable. The coefficient here stands for the estimates of both the intercept and the independent variable. And always know that the size of this coefficient tells you the direction of the relationship between the explanatory variable and the dependent variable. Next is the standard error. The standard error shows how much deviation occurs from predicting the slope coefficient. The standard error tells you how much deviation has occurred from predicting the slope coefficient correctly. The next one I move on to is the T statistics. The T statistics measures the number of standard errors that the coefficient is from zero. It tells you how much your coefficient has deviated from being zero. How many standard errors? In this case, we have two, five, six. So we can see a total deviation from being zero. And how can you compute your t-statistics? Simply divide your coefficient by its respective standard error. I move on to the probability value of the t-statistics. This is the smallest evidence you have to reject the null hypothesis. For your model to be statistically significant, you always look for values between 0 and 5%. So if your value is less than or equals to 5%, then you can always reject the null. Some researchers may also extend that um, prop value to 10%. So if you have any value less than 10%, you can also have sufficient evidence to reject your null. I move on to the lower part of the regression table where we have the R squared and the adjusted R squared. The R squared tells you how much variation can be explained by the explanatory variables. That is, in my PCE, it tells me that income can explain 99.9% .9 of variation in PCE. Adjusted R squared. Adjusted R squared can decrease as I increase more explanatory variables. 
If k is not taken, if you have too many explanatory variables, you may end up having a negative R squared. So be careful in adding explanatory variables. SE of regression is just the standard error of the entire regression. The sum of squared residuals has two components. The explained sum of squares and the residual sum of squares. Whenever you run your analysis, some are explained by the model, some are explained to randomness. So the sum of squared residuals capture that. Next is the log likelihood. The log likelihood simply tells you the difference you will obtain if you are running a restricted version of use model and the unrestricted version. So the difference between the value you will obtain from the restricted version and the value you obtain from the unrestricted version is the figure you are seeing under log likelihood. Uh, following that is the F statistics. This tells you how jointly significant your independent variables are in explaining the dependent variable. In this case, I only have one independent variable. But if I have more than that, the F value here will tell me whether those variables are significant enough to explain the dependent variable. So the higher my F statistics, the better my model. The prop value of the F statistics simply tells me the statistical significance of my F value. So the lower this figure, the better my model. The mean dependent variable in this case is just the average value of the dependent variable in your model. The standard deviation of the dependent variable tells you the deviation of the mean of the dependent variable from its true value. Next, I move on to the Akake Info criterion, the Schwarz criterion, and the Anand Quinn criterion. These are criterion used in choosing the best model. So, the lower the value, the better the model. So, between these three, you can see that the Akake Info criterion gives me the lowest value. So, that tells me that the AIC will be the ideal model to adopt for this, um, my analysis. Lastly is the Dobbin Watson statistics. What does that tell you? The Dobbin Watson tests for first order serial correlation in the error term. And the rule of thumb is that if the Dobbin Watson is less than two, it evidences positive serial correlation in your model. So whenever your Dobbin Watson is lower than two, it tells you your model is suffering from serial correlation. So in brief, this is what the entire table from eViews connotes. So whenever you run your analysis from today, you have the basic interpretation of what your results are. I will wrap up this tutorial by just giving you a recap of what we've done today. Dependent variable is the ask variable. The method is the estimation technique. The date captures the time you are carrying out your analysis. The sample must be in line with your scope of research. Observations must be equal to your sample size. The variable in this, in, in, from EVIS output is just the intercept and the slope. The, the coefficients are simply the estimates. The standard error is the deviation of the coefficient from its true value. The t statistics capture the number of standard errors that the coefficient is from being zero. The prop value is the smallest evidence you have in rejecting the null hypothesis. The R squared tells you the variation in dependent variable explained by the regressors. The higher the R squared, the better your model. The adjusted R squared will reduce as small explanatory variables are added to your model. The SE of the regression is just a summary based on the estimated variance of the residual. It is the standard error of the regression. The sum of square residuals has two components. The explained sum of squares and the residual sum of squares. The log likelihood, like I said before, is the difference between the restricted version and the unrestricted version of this model. The F statistics will capture the significance of the explanatory variable in explaining the dependent variable. And for the prop value of the F statistics, the lower the prop value, the better the predictive power of the independent variables in jointly predicting the dependent variable. The mean dependent variable is just the average value of the dependent variable. The standard deviation of the dependent variable simply indicates the deviation of the average value of the, of the dependent variable. AIC, the Schwarz, the Anand Queen, these are often used to choose between competing models. And lastly, the W Watson is used to find out if there is first order serial correlation in your error term. Rule of thumb, if W Watson is less than two, it shows that your model is suffering from positive serial correlation. Thank you for watching. 
subscribe for more videos from Crunch Ukraine Metrics. Endeavor to visit our website and our blog for detailed tutorials on what we've done so far.